Hello, this is Mr. John Ossick from Malvern Prep, Malvern, Pennsylvania, and today, uh, Malvern Prep juniors who took AP Economics, Micro, and Macro this, this year are going to go over uh, question number two from the 2014 Macro Test. That's a short question, question number two. Macro Economist Extraordinaire, uh, Alex Jablonski is going to prepare question number two for, for our viewers. Alex, you're on. So, Clay, read me the first question. Yep. The Federal Reserve can influence the supply of money. Assume that the Federal Reserve targets a lower federal funds rate. What open market operation can the Federal Reserve use to achieve the lower target? Given your answer to Part A1, what will happen to the price of government bonds? Okay, so uh, an open market operation is referring to what the Federal Reserve will do with bonds. So they can either buy bonds or they can sell bonds. Um, so they're thinking, uh, we want to make this interest rate lower, so if we increase supply of money, then that will give us a lower interest rate. You see the interest rate decreases. Uh, so they want to increase the supply of money. So to increase the supply of money in banks, that means that they have to buy bonds uh, and give the banks money for those bonds. Uh, so the open market operation is to buy bonds. And uh, given that, what's going to happen to the price of bonds? So if the government, uh, the Federal Reserve, demands more bonds, then uh, we want to see what, what's going to happen. So if demand goes up, what happens to the price? The price will also increase. And uh, if you didn't know that, uh, you could look at uh, you know the uh, inverse relationship between bond prices. Uh, the yield on the bond is always going to be the same. Uh, but since the interest rate went down uh, from their buying bonds, if interest rates go down, then price has to go up because of the inverse relationship. All right, letter B. Using a correctly labeled graph of the money market, show the effect of the open market operation from Part A1 on the nominal interest rate. Uh, okay, so I, I kind of did that in uh, Part A. You can see they increased the supply, and so the interest rate uh, decreased, which is what they wanted. Letter C. Assume that the Federal Reserve buys government bonds from commercial banks. Based only on this transaction, will a level of required reserves in the, in the commercial banks increase, decrease, or remain the same? Uh, okay, so since uh, the banks have to keep a required percentage, uh, the constant percentage of their reserves uh, in, in a vault, and they can't loan that out. Uh, because that's a constant percentage, uh, this, we, we can uh, figure out the change in the level of the reserves. So when uh, the Fed bought bonds, they infused banks with money. So the actual reserves went up. And since the actual reserves went up, they had more money on reserve. Uh, they had to keep a constant percentage so that the level of reserves increased. And they also had an increase in the excess reserves. Um, but it was cut down by the percentage they had to keep away. Um, so since the, just to make sure that you remembered, the question asked level of reserves, not percentage. So the level increases and the percentage stays constant. Letter D. Another monetary policy action involves changing the discount rate. Define the discount rate. Uh, the discount rate, um, whenever you remember discount rate, Fed funds rate, together you try and, they're, they're similar but they're different. Uh, it's opposite of what you would think. The Fed funds rate is the, um, what banks charge between banks for lending, and the discount rate is uh, from the Federal Reserve to uh, member banks to borrow directly from the Federal Reserve. Um, we got to thank... Mike Stangis from the University of Miami for his poster on tools of the central bank. Um, he goes over expansionary monetary policy and restrictive monetary policy.